So the category winner for bars and restaurants is table number one in China by Neri and Hu. Congratulations. Well, congratulations a second time on winning the bars and restaurants category. Let's go straight into it, shall we? Tell us a little bit about this project, where it is and who it's for. Um, we had designed a hotel and they had rented this out or planned to rent it out to restaurant owners. And I was getting really nervous because you can imagine if you design this hotel and the owners of the hotel were willing to go all out with you, with your idea and your concept. And the person that wants to do the restaurant has a different commercial mindset than most of them do. Um, one of the aspects in, in Shanghai and in China is that private dining room is very important. So people oftentimes have private dining rooms. So the idea of public that we were trying to address, let alone having that slit right open that you could look into and engage uh, bedrooms, um, was very nerve-wracking for us. Uh, but fortunately enough, uh, the person who ran this hotel, who is Jason Atherton, um, uh, went, went with, with our ideas. Unfortunately as well, because I guess it was a different client, you were allowed to enter two different categories for the same building. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> there was another restaurant that I um, uh, submitted um, that I thought was a bit more thorough, but it was not shortlisted. So to my surprise, this was shortlisted. So I flattered. So tell us a bit about the design of this space then. <laughs> the design of this space, um, the idea of this blurring space where you're in between both public and private, um, where you're, you don't really know where you are, um, this particular uh, section is intriguing to us. Uh, but even more importantly was we were allowed to uh, fabricate the tables uh, using the recycled uh, roof, rotten roof from up above. Um, and also fabricate, those chairs were custom made uh, by our office. Um, and obviously the whole menu, uh, the whole setting. So it was an interesting way to engage the entire office from graphics to product design uh, to interiors, obviously dealing with architecture. And that idea of recycling materials, is that something that is accepted in China? Is it done often? Um, they'd like to do it as a branding exercise called sustainable. But in essence, they don't really like it. Um, and the idea that it is old looking is not something commonly accepted. Uh, but I, I think it's growing. There is a growing group of people. And it's not just the expats or the foreigners. Uh, but I think there is a group of a, a small bars, restaurants, um, that are coming to the forefront that has the same sensibilities. Tell us quickly a little bit about the creative scene where you are. I mean, um, not just architecture, interior design. Like, what's, what's the buzz? What's happening? Are there, are, there, are there movements emerging from your part of the world? Uh, definitely, I think. Um, obviously, architecture is... Um, no, interiors is a lot I, uh, more ahead than architecture. Partly, partly because interiors does have a commercial value to it. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, but the art scene is thriving. Um, you do see some of the more significant artists that is referring back to a certain period uh, of Chinese history. So people like Ai Weiwei, who does things that are very similar to what Duchamp is doing, or Joseph Boyce. So I think um, these dialogues are, are coming together. Um, and it's, it's interesting, and you see a lot of lecture series from universities um, having uh, great leaders and thinkers coming to Shanghai, Hong Kong, uh, Beijing, and, and having these talks. So it, it's, it's, um, it, it's, still, it's still a problem. People are so busy. Um, so architects and architects don't meet. Um, and I think it's very important to have an architecture league or an interior design league, for instance, where in discussion uh, ideas uh, can be put forth and perhaps crit or discuss. And you mentioned before how you know, um, the, the great moment in New York in the early 20th century when it didn't matter where people were from, but they, they did their thing there, they, they, they built modernism there. Do you think that when we look back in 50 years' time, we, we could say that that was the, the moment when Shanghai or Beijing became the kind of contemporary city that was defining culture in that way? I think so. I mean, it took a while. Uh, Deng Xiaoping in 1978, the great, you know, they opened up economically. Um, and obviously it took a while because politically it had to open up, 
economically in business, but now it's, it's the uh, generation of the designers. I do believe the notion of the melting pot, because you, if you go to uh, Shanghai, there's a lot of Asian faces, but there's Singaporeans, uh, there's Chinese from Indonesia, Chinese from the Philippines, Chinese from Malaysia, um, there's a lot of Japanese practicing, um, and so in Koreans, so seemingly they all look Asian, uh, but actually there is a huge group of, uh, of different nationalities, let alone the Europeans and Americans. Okay, well brilliant. Thanks um, for Thank joining you. us again and congratulations on the two category awards and good luck tomorrow. And it's been a fascinating afternoon's series of conversations. Thanks to all the audience. And Thank thanks you. to you, Claire. Thank you.